Long, long ago, in the ancient times of 2018, we first started hearing about a vulnerability known as Spectre. This was an unintended side effect of branch prediction and speculative execution used on basically every modern CPU. This was initially accompanied by another exploit known as Meltdown, often referred to together as Spectre and Meltdown. Since then, there have been some great breakdowns of how the initial exploits actually worked, along with their subsequent versions, because this was not just a one and done situation. There have been many, many more iterations, and no matter how many years go by, it seems like we are never going to be done hearing about Spectre. And once again, not that. New Spectre V2 attack impacts Linux systems on Intel CPUs. At this point, how many of you guys still know this is going on? Obviously, the first one got massive attention, but I haven't seen anybody talking about this. Now, when this came out, AMD released a security bulletin, Spectre V2 mitigation bypass on Linux. An external researcher has shared a paper with AMD titled Inspector Gadget Inspecting the Residual Attack Surface of cross privilege Spectre V2. AMD is not aware of any impact to AMD products. No customer action is required. So this specific one seems to just be about Intel CPUs. Now why did all this matter in the first place? Speculative execution is a performance optimization technique where modern processors guess what instructions will be executed next and start implementing them before they know they are needed. As modern processors are extremely powerful, they can predict multiple parts a program may take and execute them simultaneously. If one of the guesses is correct, there is an increase in application performance. If the guesses are wrong, the CPU throws away the previous work and proceeds as usual without changing performance. However, while this feature improves performance, it also introduces security risks by leaving traces of privileged data in CPU caches, which attackers can potentially access. This data can include account passwords, encryption keys, sensitive personal or corporate information, software code, and more. Two attack methods are branch target injection, which involves manipulating the CPU's branch prediction to execute unauthorized code paths, and branch history injection, which manipulates the branch history to cause speculative execution of chosen gadgets, code paths, leading to data leakage. Those two specific attacks are not new. Those are the Spectre exploits from 2022, which Intel already assigned CVEs to. CVE 2024-2201 involves a new Spectre V2 exploit which works against the Linux kernel. If you'd like to read about those old ones, I'll leave this link in the description down below. As the CERT Coordination Center disclosed yesterday, the new floor tracked is CVE 2024-2201 allows unauthenticated attackers to read arbitrary memory data by leveraging speculative execution bypassing present security mechanisms designed to isolate privilege levels. And here is that disclosure, basically summed up as the current mitigation strategies are ineffective against this new exploit and new things need to be put in place. I'll leave the full thing linked in the description down below if you want to read it for yourself. Here we also have a demonstration and it looks pretty bad because what it does is leaks the hash of your root password from the Etsy shadow file, so if you're in a situation where this can be exploited, that's pretty bad. If you are wondering whether or not you're affected by various versions of Spectre, Intel does provide a table. A totally not confusing <laughs> at all table. <laughs> not at all confusing that you can definitely, definitely follow along with and isn't getting more and more confusing every single time there is a new version of Spectre that comes out. Now, as with a lot of my videos, the reason why I'm talking about this is kind of based on a single comment. Under this bleeping computer post, we have two comments here. This is how many people still care about Spectre stuff. How bad does the patch kill performance this time? Exactly. Guess we'll have to buy the next generation good processor or we're not doing our best at being secure. Money, money, money. And not everybody is as extreme about it, but a lot of people out there do discuss mitigations killing performance. 
is there any recommended way to use your system with mitigations equals off? How many of you use mitigations equals off as a kernel parameter? Is it safe to turn off mitigations in Linux? And over the years, Phronix has done some really great performance testing. Basically, every time a really big version of the exploit comes out or a related exploit, and then there are mitigations for it, there is testing that is going to be available. For example, back in 2020, looking at the Linux performance two years after Spectre slash Meltdown mitigations, here is another one, a look at the CPU security mitigation costs three years after Spectre and Meltdown. Benchmarking the Linux mitigated performance for Replead. It's painful. This was a related exploit, not specifically Spectre. And then, in light of Spectre BHI, the performance impact for Repol lines on modern Intel CPUs. And what do you think the benchmarks look like every single time? Now, the impact depended on the specific workload. But in this case, no mitigations is the pink line, Default mitigations is the green line, bigger is better. In this case, lower is better. In this case, lower is better. <laughs> Higher is better. Let's go to the next one. Here we have mitigations off with the purple line, default with the orange line. Higher is better on this graph. In some cases, like this one here with this specific CPU, it wasn't that different. But in every single case, every single case, this one shows it differently with the side with the performance gain having the graph. And outside of like one specific case here, it's always going in one direction. For some workloads and some CPUs, it gets as bad as 50% performance loss. And this isn't just one patch. This was multiple patches over the years that in some cases made it progressively worse. Now, in some cases, it was more like 1% or 2%, maybe even lower. And that is a lot of the performance loss that was there. But if you had a case where you were seeing a 50% performance drop, I can see why a lot of people out there are kind of suspicious about more mitigations being put in place. And as you can probably predict, now we are seeing this. Linux 6.9 RC4 to bring new fixes for x86 speculation mitigations. The mitigations are never ever going to stop because the CPUs seem like they were designed in the dumbest way possible. As someone not involved in CPU design in any sense. It seems like this initial approach to designing with branch prediction and speculative execution was fundamentally flawed. They were basically just throwing away any concept of security to get as much performance as possible, and then they got caught out doing it, and it became a serious problem. And now, retroactively, they need to fix these problems and fix these problems and fix these problems, and because it was so badly designed, there's more and more problems always being discovered. This Reddit post puts it really well. There really isn't any way to get around the reality that Intel got caught cheating on performance for years at the expense of security. The performance impact is so bad because they were cheating that hard. We can talk about how annoying it's been for the users to have lost this performance, but the reality of the situation is this performance never should have been on the table in the first place. These were fundamentally broken CPUs, and they've been broken for decades. And then finally, back in 2018, they were forced to address just how badly designed they were. And now we're still picking up the pieces and slowly getting to a point where this doesn't become a problem anymore. It's not really performance being lost. It's performance that never should have existed in the first place. On the bright side, if you're okay with having a broken CPU, Linux has all of the pieces in place for you to just get rid of all the mitigations, just disable kernel level mitigations, not install microcode updates, and just go about your day. Now, I would not recommend doing this. I know some people say, oh, if I just don't install random applications off the internet, I will be fine. Except for the fact that this has been exploited using JavaScript in the past, so... If you go to a website, um, yeah, you're running arbitrary code on your system. So uh, have fun with that one, I guess. You know, it's your life. And as such, a lot of the browser mitigations that are in place 
typically don't have ways to circumvent them. They are in the browser, and if you want to get rid of them, you're going to have to go and fork the browser. Please don't do this. This is not worth your time. It is much better to have a CPU that isn't a walking security nightmare. But it's your computer. Do whatever you want. So let me know. Are you a mitigations user? Are you like most people on Linux that have the mitigations enabled and just don't really think about it? You might know that there is some performance loss by doing so, but it is what it is. Or are you one of those people who do like to live on the edge and like to have that bit of extra performance for your use case, which maybe did get hit really hard? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bear, pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And what are you so afraid of? Yeah.